All right, it's Thursday evening, the 4th, and we'll kick it off for the 5th onward. How's it, Wave Riders? GQ dropping in with your local swall tracker, and we're starting back a week ago, Wednesday, the 27th of August. We had uh, near hurricane force winds in this puppy, and that's why we saw 22 to 25 second forerunners yesterday, and the swall, swall peaked out today at, with a few five foot sets at the top reefs and plenty four footers and mostly three footers. But uh, this is the culprit. And there actually was a pair of storms. Uh, the first one was weaker, this one was stronger. Higher winds produce faster moving waves because of longer periods and thus it arrived at the same time and we had a one-two punch even though it was lully with flurries of sets it was a combo of two systems this is the guy right here we'll start up the animations you can see it moved up our way it had a good tilt a lot of the energy was passed off to the americas yep california will be seeing plenty of that in tahiti as well and uh, look at that, it keeps elongating. We get a little bit of secondary support for Friday with three feet, 15 seconds. So it'll hold us up in the two to three plus zone for Friday and check that out. And even into Saturday, thanks to all these fetches you're seeing at the surface. It's just game on. It's been an amazing summer in terms of consistency. We go rather zonal, a slight northerly tilt, but mostly zonal here for a couple days. And then things uh, click in for the better here with some more equatorial bound flows. Those are called meridional flows, and those that's where we like it. And there's some pockets of some high winds here. This guy right here will be bumping us up Monday the eighth. You know, 18 second forerunners peaking out on Tuesday from this source, two feet, 15, 16 seconds. So Tuesday, Wednesday of the upcoming week, we'll have some solid three footers from this source right here. And again, this is all hind casting. I'll be able to bring you a current here shortly. But we'll go ahead and run through the animations one more time. We were in a little bit of a quiet zone, and then we pumped up right here for the current event. And then this takes us through the weekend right here. And then we uh, kick off this first batch for next week there for Monday and Tuesday. You saw it at the end of the animation. Now we're current today, Thursday the 4th. You can see we're in a quiet period, but it doesn't matter because these swells have had such long fetches. The events have been lasting three to four days and overlapping. And I'll we'll start in the animation. There's this first batch of winds, some good ones, some 30-foot seas in this system. And again, they're kind of tracking zonal or west to east. We like them to move up our way. So we'll see side band swell from this guy thanks to angular spreading of swell trains. And this guy right here, this is a Saturday's model. So you go out approximately a week, and we'll see some, uh, hopefully some 3-foot, 16-second swells out of this, which will translate into easily 4 feet for uh, the middle of the month. But this guy's right here, smaller winds, lighter, smaller swell. It's going to be overrun by this guy that has seas near 50 feet, near hurricane force winds. This is a whopper swell. If this thing was moving north our way it would produce 8 to 12 foot surf for Hawaii that's how big and powerful this current system is now the way watch 3 could be running hot on these which they do further out you go in the forecast but right now they're saying 4 foot 20 second forerunner Saturday the 13th and 4 feet 18 seconds on Sunday the 14th those are the days you want to mark your calendars if this fantasy comes through, if the wave watch three from this guy, we will see four to seven foot local scale or two and a half times overhead from this guy right here. And then we go quiet again. There's really nothing on the charts. We'll just go ahead and run through the models one more time. A few days of quiet, a little pulse there, and then the bigger pulse here for overlapping events towards the middle of the month, starting the 13th, 14th, and lasting all the way through the 15th and 16th. Yahoo. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the North Pack. This is going back a, about a week as well. Wednesday the 27th. Here's Marie uh, heading off, sending the best swell to California that had been seen. Can you imagine what Baja was like if California was that good? Anyway, there's Marie, and uh, she is now somewhere up here. I'll, I'll start the model run shortly, but just wanted to go back and show you what the North Pack scenario looked like. Just your p typical big high pressure up here situated for the summer. And now we're starting to see a little bit more activity here as we uh, veer into a new season. Starting in the animations, you see that northwesterly track of Marie. And uh, continuing further, high pressure. She dissolves, but you know what? Marie is actually, even to today, the fourth, affecting the trade wind flow. She's off here now, 
about a thousand miles northwest of us, and her effects will be completely gone by Sunday when trades are able to get back to more normal levels. But it's been so hot with highs near 90 and lows near 75 that we've been getting convection when the land heats up. And Marie has held back the trades a little bit more than this was typical this time of year, allowing for some competing sea breezes at select leeward shorelines. So we'll uh, click in the animation again. You can see it goes quiet. And then we have some troughing off here towards the date line, and that's going to bring us up some swell, the first one of the season for the country. And let me get to that. Here we are for Friday's models. You can see a lot of storming is forming off just to the uh, Japan side of the dateline here at 180, which is about 1,200 miles away. Here we are over here, about 20 north. Here's a new hurricane off of Baja hugging it. The name of this guy, well, it was Marie, and now it's a man named Norbit. And not going to be seeing any swell, us at least, from this source. And I'll start the animations and explain these as we go. Check that spinner out. This guy right here crosses the date line this weekend with some 30-foot seas. And it broadens and occludes or stalls. When it spins in place like this, it allows the seas to be more fully developed. And these systems could actually be undercalled currently by the Wave Watch 3. Right now, they're projecting 5 feet 14 seconds for Tuesday. And it could get up to, again, you know, in that 5, 6, 7 foot range from this system right here. And you could see Norbit sort of moving off the Baja coast as it heads northwest. We have another a tropical storm out here that tries to recurve. This is where we get our big west swells. Check that out. It looks like, I am not kidding, just two hours ago when I was on these models, it has increased its potential for a west-northwest swell. Take a look at this. I'm not kidding. Two hours ago, it was totally different. Now, that's super long range, but we are going to keep an eye out. It's recurving. Looks like it's going to start out as a warm core system in the tropics, get out and become a cold core low-pressure system which we call gender benders. Oh my God, I can't believe that's never happened to me before. Two hours ago, it wasn't doing this. It was dissipating right about here. Okay, well, taking a look at winds that are 30,000 feet up. These are large scale upper air currents called the jet stream. We'll start up here in the North Pack. You can see some dipping and troppiness off near the date line, thus the scenario of that nor first northwest swell. It's actually sucking that low pressure, sucking up some moisture from the tropics, and and the the wind patterns on this thing could actually be undercalled by Wave Watch 3. We'll just have to wait and see. Down under, we have two branches, both of them zonal. With We're in that quiet period right now. But we'll stick with the North Pack. Let me let me take a look at this. Uh, see this guy? It's a large-scale spin allowing that load to, to occlude. And then as time goes on, out seven days, the jet stream does elongate all the way from Japan into the Gulf. And that is definitely showing good signs uh, for a good season. We'll wait and see. Now, down under, do you see that point towards the equator? We have two of them, and thus two storms that I was showing you, the actual surface low pressures earlier. But it was zonal. And then here kicking in Sunday, Monday, and a nice point up towards us with another one the next day with a much stronger system, which will pass up and overlap the, pr the prior. So it's just back to back to back, and we're looking sweet past the middle of September. Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's go from the upper regions of the jet stream down to the surface hand-drawn charts. There is Marie off here, just a remnant circulation, but still able to affect our trade wind flow and keeping them light. Uh, this high pressure far to the northeast has its ridge about three, 400 miles to the north of us, thus also lightening, lightening up the trades. Here comes that low pressure to bring us in our five to seven foot northwest swell on Tuesday. It will fill in small kind, three feet by Monday evening, and these things can change for the better or worse, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. This is just a heads-up scenario here for us. But there you go. High-pressure ridge, keeping the winds light, and then they're back to normal on, on Sunday. So if you don't like the stronger winds, get out Friday and Saturday. Now we jam from the surface back up to the upper region, showing you the weather, the water vapor loops. The brown areas are the dry sinking air from the high pressures. There's Norbit over here hugging the coast. And it is now a hurricane. There comes the low pressure, bringing us in our waves very shortly. 
and it's hard to see the circulation from Marie on this right now to our thousand miles to our northwest, but she's somewhere around in here. This is the intertropical convergence zone where the trade winds from the south pack meet the trades from the north pack. It will stay put. We are actually looking like we are in a nice pattern here of, of stab a stable atmosphere in the water vapor loops. Okay, and we're going to drill down a little bit, tell you again, highs, 90. It feels even hotter, especially if you're over pavement. There's the intertropical convergence zone. You can't see Norbit coming out here. Definitely more storminess off here. Drilling down a little further, you can see a northeast tilt to the trade winds. And as we get down, drill down a little bit further, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. There you go. And, the, of course, the whole leeward coast, which has the waves, loves it because it blows more straight offshore from Makaha to Sandy Beach. And here's those water vapor loops. And actually, it's a, a bit rainier uh, off the windward side here than I thought and over the Malka areas. And even offshore, there's more showers than uh, the water vapor loops would show. But I guess that's Hawaii Ne. Some showers of blessings here for Hawaii Ne. And uh, maybe we'll get some of that spilling over tonight over to the leeward coast, but I doubt it. And we'll finish off with these really killer wind animations. There's that new low pressure that we'll be occluding, bringing us in our swell for, for Tuesday, filling in Monday night. You can see the spinner off of here hugging the coast, the hurricane Norbit. And down under, hard to see. There's a little Tasman Sea energy heading the wrong way for us. A zonal flow down under. Let's go ahead and move this around here a little bit, and I'll show you. Uh, no swell generated until about three days from now. And so you can see the winds flowing towards the, in the intertropical convergence zone. And let's go ahead and take a look down from this angle. And uh, yeah, you can see some storminess here in the Gulf. That's, that's not bringing us any waves. And that's your local swell tracker. Catch you back here in about 10 days. Aloha.